Hi, welcome to In the Studio with Kate. Um, I think it's week 24. I tell myself I should always look that up before I start recording, but don't ever seem to. So if it's wrong, I'll put it in the notes. Um, this week I spent some time in my journals and on painting. So um, I will talk about that a little bit first. Um, just dawned on me. I have another journal to get out to talk about. Um, I started last week and I showed you. Okay. Where I put the color down for this piece. It was just bits of color, which I thought looked very Mexican to me. Um, and so I added collage last night at my journal group and painted a little and here's my page. So had lots of fun with it. Might do a little more doodling. I'm not sure. Sometimes I like to let them sit for a bit. So that is that journal. And this is another one I started this week, which same process, laying on color, laying on collage, laying on paint, laying on collage, back and forth doodling and so forth. This one I have not even started doing the doodling on it, but I kind of like the feel that it has. I really like this image here, this woman. Um, got lots of different things on it, but you know, it's, it's definitely a work in progress. And um, felt like jump starting my journaling. So I think the idea of working in a bunch of different journals helped for me. Um, and then yesterday I had a studio day with my friend Cynthia and decided I was just going to start a journal page from scratch. And I actually got this idea in the middle of the night <laughs> or early morning or something that since we were moving, um, the moon is moving into Pisces, that I would do a Pisces moon. So here's the one I did. This. Um, Disc is one that I made um, in preparation for the class I'm teaching. And then I added the fish to it. The fish were painted with, I don't know if you ever even can see if it gets close, you can't see the shimmer in them, but they were painting, painted with a thing called twinkling H2Os, which is these little watercolor pots that have mica in them. And so they had a little bit of shame. Had a lot of fun making my fish, so that was kind of fun. Uh, great um, exercise. And then I started working on my Mexican paintings again. And I had this one almost finished. And then I decided I didn't like this block, this thing I put in the corner and took the entire thing out last night. <laughs> and I added a move. So I'm considering this one done. Um, I'm kind of, as I analyze it, I kind of think I'm the person. And then there's all the lots of the things that I saw when I was in Mexico. So um, I'm happy that that one is finished. It, it feels it feels right. It needed that moon apparently. Now this next one I changed a lot as well. I was hoping I would have it done, but no. It's there's a lot more going to happen here. Um, the figures have come out more. The figures are different than the last time I showed this. Um, I totally changed her. She was driving me nuts. The angle of her face, I kept changing it. Couldn't get anything to happen. And so now, once I put this yellow, I put this yellow back here this morning, and I really like how that makes everything pop. So I think I'm going to do like the Mexican buildings that are painted all these different colors. I think that's what the background's going to become. I was trying out a couple of shades here to see which one I liked, but um, I'm going to hopefully move forward and maybe get that finished this week. And maybe, you can only hope, um, but I had fun with those. And I actually went into this painting frenzy yesterday. I mean, like I started early in the morning and I painted most of the day and then I went out for the evening and then I came back and I painted more. So been pretty crazy and I'm gonna test this out but I really don't know if working in my journal first kind of infused everything that really fed into the paint into working on the painting so whether that's going to turn out to be true or not 
I don't know, but I like the idea of it. It seems like, oh, doing a warm up or something beforehand and then just moving into whatever you're going to work on next. So um, I really liked, um, um, I like that process. There's one other thing that my friend Cynthia, great, great old Cynthia, taught me how to do. And I'm just going to, not going to actually do it, but I'm going to give you the tools so you know, we'll know how to do it. One of the things you go, what I'm going to talk about is taking like a pit pen or a micron pen and refilling it with India ink. So you need to have ink that actually is India ink. It has to say so on the cover. No, I haven't done it with the microns yet. See, okay, yeah, I was able to do it really easily. What you need is the same kind of pair of pliers. You got your pen. You see the tip that's metal on the edge of the tip. You just take your clip and you pull that out. You set that aside. And then what you do is you take your hypodermic, which I bought mine from Goulet Pens. Any place that does calligraphy will, sh will have these. If you went to a farm supply store, you would not get a, a, a syringe that, did, that didn't have a point. You know, because you're there used, you're putting it in an animal, so it has to have a point to get in. These are blunt. So I don't know if you could get them that way. But anyways, I got mine from Google A pens um, to fill my um, ink uh, for my fountain pens. But anyways, you just draw a little bit of ink up that, that cylinder, and then you take your pen, let's see, okay, and there's a little hole in there, and you put the syringe in there, and you drop like, like you, you would put like three or four drops of ink through there and just drop it in. Then you would take your, okay, I'm trying to pick it up with the pliers. You would take your piece, then you put it back in. And just with a little pressure, is back to new. Now I just wait a little bit so that has time to soak into the thing that's apparently inside the pen. And your pen is good as new. You don't have to throw your Micron pen or your pit pens away. You can refill them with India ink. Um, and India ink, oh, you can buy a, I have little bottles of it, but you can actually buy it from Dick Blick uh, for this huge bottle that will last your lifetime for about $12. So it's a pretty good deal. Um, and if you can't remember this later when you're trying to do it, the Frugal Crafter also has a video on YouTube showing you how to do it. Um, but I just wanted to include that hint because my pens start to wear out and I just toss them and go buy new ones. So this is really a lifesaver. <laughs> so i um, excited that I'll be able to do that now. I just wanted to share it with you. Um, I hope you're out in your studio getting some really great art time in there, having fun creating things. I'd love to hear about them if you are. Um, and if you're not, I encourage you to do so, you know. Take some time, create a studio day, spend, spend the day there or in your art corner or whatever facil facility you have to create your art in. And um, I will be back next week with who knows what else is gonna happen. I never know what's gonna happen on any given week. <laughs> as most of us but when you when you're recording every week it's sort of interesting you go okay I have to do something <laughs> so I have something to talk about anyways I'm gonna close this and I will see you all next week bye